Hi there, teachers. You are welcome. My name is Emmanuel Njuako, Regional Pedagogic Inspector and your Master Trainer for Psychosocial Support and Risk Mitigation in the School Milieu. In the course of this session, we are going to look at the characteristics of a PSS activity or the characteristics of PSS activities and what specifically the teacher can do to implement them in lessons. And this presentation is going to be done in the following order. First, we are going to have an introduction followed by objectives, learning activities, a summary, and the session shall end up with an evaluation exercise. We all know that children who have suffered afflictions or are psychologically affected in one way or the other need healing in order to study effectively. And this healing can be given them where PSS activities are infused into lessons. Therefore, during the infusion process, care should be taken so that all the characteristics are included to provide healing opportunities. The principal question which we are going to ask simply is, talking about healing opportunities, which are the characteristics of a PSS activity? And what can the teacher do to ensure that they are included when infusion is done? Now, the answer to this question is given when we shall examine the objectives of this session. Therefore, upon completion, you will be able to give the characteristics of a PSS activity and the different healing opportunities which can be provided. Say what can be done to include them so that healing opportunities can be provided to learners. After examining the objectives of this session, we have now come to the core of this session, which is the characteristics of PSS. And the question which we are going to ask simply is, what are the characteristics of a PSS activity? Now, the simple question or the simple answer which we can give is that these are the potential healing opportunities provided to psychologically disturbed learners at the following levels. One, social. Two, emotional. Three, cognitive. And four, equal participation of learners in activities in the classroom. At this juncture, we are going to examine each of the characteristics case by case, starting with the first one, which is provision of healing opportunities at the social level. And the question which we are going to ask again is, during infusion, what can a teacher do to provide healing opportunities to learners at the social level? And the answer to this question simply is that he or she can do so by introducing group work in order to allow children work in groups and in pairs. 
Since this arrangement will help in one socialization through positive human interaction, cooperation, collaboration through the exchange of ideas and experiences, establishment of bonds and positive relationships, building of trust and self-worth, develop self-confidence and mutual respect. Now, the second characteristic of a PSS activity is the provision of healing opportunities at the emotional level. And so, what can the teacher do practically to provide healing opportunities to learners at the emotional level? And the answer still to this question is that he or she can introduce group work activities because by working in groups, children will develop a feeling of belonging. They will equally develop a feeling of acceptance and love for one another. And these feelings can decrease anger, frustration, and reduce aggressive tendencies in them. Third aspect which we are going to examine will be the provision of healing opportunities at the community level. And so, what can the teacher do to provide healing opportunities at the community level? And the answer to this question simply is that still he or she will proceed through group work because when children work in groups, they are bound to exchange ideas, they are bound to communicate. And in this process, they will have to think critically, reason logically, imagine possibilities, and equally learn new things. And all these mental activities are capable of stimulating the brain. So when children work in groups, this has a positive effect because it can heal them at the cognitive level. Fourth key characteristic of the PSS activity, which is the promotion of equal and equitable participation. And so the question which we are going to ask still is, what can the teacher do to permit all learners participate equally and equitably in PSS activities. And so the answer simply is that the teacher should give all the children the same chance to participate in an activity. And so therefore, there should be no discrimination on grounds of disability. Because as we know, if you look at Article 35, of the 1998 Orientation Law on Education in, in our um, educational system, it prohibits discrimination on grounds of disability. Therefore, if a teacher wants to carry out a physical exercise, for example, football, and there is a child in class with an orthopedic impairment, that child can be given an equal chance to participate in that activity, which means that there should be some form of inclusion. And so the teacher should give the child a role to play, which is adapted to his physical state. Now, if you take the case of football, that child can be given the role of either a referee or a coach. And in that way, he or she will take active part as the others, as far as the activity is concerned. After having looked at 
the different characteristics of a PSS activity, we can say that when planning a PSS activity, the teacher should ask these key questions. One, does the activity have the potentials to help learners interact, socialize, cooperate, and down, and down the way build mutual trust, self-respect, and self-esteem? Is the activity capable of stimulating children's brains to think, reason, imagine things, and most especially, learn something new? Can the activity provoke children to develop positive emotions? In the course of carrying out the activity, envisage, are all the children going to participate equally and equitably? Now, if all these questions are answered in the affirmative, then the PSS activity contains all the four characteristics. Therefore, in this session, you have learned about the different characteristics of PSS, which are the potential healing opportunities which the infusion of a PSS activity will provide to psychologically disturbed learners at the social, emotional, cognitive, as well as equal and equitable participation during activities. After having examined all the different characteristics of a PSS activity, here is an evaluation exercise to see how well you mastered the content. Based on your knowledge of the characteristics of a PSS activity, say whether these statements are true or false. A. PSS activity provides healing opportunities to learners at the social, emotional, and cognitive levels. And the answer obviously is true because these are the ingredients or these are the positive effects which children will have when all the characteristics of a PSS activity are infused as far as lessons are concerned. Group work is not important for the characteristics of a PSS activity to be included when infusion is done with respect to lessons. And the answer obviously is false because group work is the key technique that can be used as far as infusion is concerned because when these, when children are asked to work in groups and in pairs, they interact, they exchange ideas and this is helpful. By working in groups, children develop a sense of discrimination and rejection. So healing cannot be provided at the emotional level when it comes to the infusion of PSS activities into lessons. The answer is false. And the reason is that instead, when children work in groups, they are included into activities are not discriminated or rejected. Next question. The infusion of PSS activities into lessons does not stimulate the learners' brains or cause them to learn new things. And the answer obviously is false because the infusion of PSS activities into lessons 
will instead cause children to think logically, imagine things, and to learn new things. Uh, in order to carry out or in order to have material with respect to this session, the following books were consulted. One, we used the training manual on psychosocial support in the classroom, UNICEF 2015. Two, we typically used the teacher's guide on psychosocial support in the school in UNICEF 2016. And with that, we have come to the end of this session. I meet you in the next, which will be on the description of PSS activities, specifically why writing your name matters.